Hello, and welcome to the Strangers on the Way podcast. I'm so excited to lead you through an activation today. Uh, we spent the past 40 days looking at um, individual stories of strangers that I met all over the world, on planes, on trains, in Uber um, cars, in my neighborhood, and each taught me a part about the heart of God. And so now let's put everything into practice. I'm gonna lead you through an activation you can just um, get in a comfy place uh, unless you're driving. Uh, keep your eyes open, but you can close your eyes if you're comfortable. And what we're going to do is reflect on people and places in your own story. And so in just a moment, I'll invite you to think of a friend, a family member, a person or a leader in your life who describes a specific characteristic or attribute. And just go with the first person that comes to mind. So you might have the same person for multiple questions. That's great. You might not be able to think of someone for certain questions. That's fine. You can just go to the next one. Um, and if you are in a place where you can grab a piece of paper and um, number it 1 through 23, that um, would be great. You can pause this and do that. All right. Just go with your first instinct. Number 1. Who is the most loving person you know? The most loving person you know. Go ahead and write their name down. Number two, who is the boldest person you know? The most courageous, the boldest person. Go ahead and write their name down. Number three, who is the gentlest person you know? The most gentle person you know. Number four, who is the most loyal person you know? The most loyal person you know. Go ahead, write their name down. Number five, who is the most peaceful person you know? Peaceful. And if you have some people listed more than once, that's perfectly fine. Number six, who is the smartest person you know? The smartest, most intelligent. Number seven, who is the most generous person you know? The most generous. Their time with their resources, most generous person you know. Number eight, who is the most willing person you know? the most willing person, willing to help out, willing to pitch in, the most willing person. Number nine, who is the most reliable person you know? Reliable, they stick to their word. They're always there to help. Reliable person. Number 10, who is the most trustworthy person you know? Most trustworthy. You can tell them anything and they'll hold it for you. The most trustworthy person. Number 11, who is the funniest person you know? The funniest person. They make you laugh. Who is the funniest person you know? Number 12, who is the most patient person in your, in your life? The most patient person you know. Number 13, who is the coolest person you know? The coolest person. <laughs> Number 14, who is the most optimistic person you know? The most optimistic, positive, see the, the glass is half full type of person. Who's the most optimistic person you know? Number 15, who is the most fun? 
the most fun person you know. Number 16, who is the most creative person you know? The most creative. Number 17, who is the most humble person you, you know? The most humble. Number 18, who is the most forgiving person you know? The most forgiving person. Number 19, who is the most encouraging person you know? The most encouraging person. Number 20, who is the most authentic person you know? The most authentic, real, down to earth. The most authentic person you know. Number 21. Who is the strongest person you know? The strongest person. Number 22. Who is the most fatherly person you know? The most fatherly person. They're like a dad to you. Number 23. Who is the most motherly person you know? The most motherly person that you know. Awesome. All right, now I invite you to imagine the faces of all these people that you just listed in your mind. So you can scan through your list or just remember through all of the people you just listed. And all of their best characteristics give us a glimpse into the face of Jesus. Jesus is loving and gentle and bold and strong and authentic and funny. He's the sum of the best people we know, plus a million times more. As you were going through the list, did you notice some blank spots? That's okay. These are simply aspects of Jesus that you haven't experienced yet. Scan through your list and notice which characteristic is highlighted to you most the one you're most longing for. Maybe this is um, a question where you had a person listed, maybe it's one of your blank spots, but scan through your list. What are you most longing for? A person who's optimistic, creative, creative or motherly or fatherly or encouraging. What characteristic stands out to you most? I invite you to take three deep breaths now you can close your eyes again if they're open. Just let your body sink into your chair. And I invite you to ask God, God, how are you the most, and you can insert the characteristic that you're longing for, in my life. So God, how are you the most fatherly? God, how are you the most motherly? How are you the most encouraging? How are you the most fun? And wait for his reply. If it helps, you can picture yourself sitting on a bench with Jesus as you ask that question. Just picture him sitting next to you. Notice what he's wearing. Notice your surroundings. You can look him in the eye or just sit next to him and ask, Jesus, how are you that in my life? And you might even want to pause this now and go ahead and um, just talk through that with him. There might be more that he wants to tell you. But as you ask that question, you might even feel some pain surface. Um, you might feel like I have had no one there in my life. There's no positive role model that I've seen in my childhood or in my life that has this characteristic. And if that's the case, I just want you to um, picture yourself next to Jesus on that bench and just picture him putting his hand over your heart. And you might even want to put your hand over your heart. And just imagine Jesus touching that part of your heart. And as he does, the pain, the deficit, the loss, the wound starts to melt away. Or 
or maybe that your pain comes from someone in that area um, who is now gone. Or maybe you've lost someone, a father, a mother, a friend, or maybe there's just a huge deficit in one of those areas. God can be what you lost. He can be the friend. He can be the mother. He can be the father. He can be the cousin. He can be the encourager. He can be what you've lost. He's safe, he's good, and he's kind. I personally rejected that offer so many times, but he kept coming and pursuing me. His desire for you is indescribable. His hope for you is unshakable. And so now I just want to invite you to picture that specific characteristic coming to you in the form of a gift. So you could, do, you could picture what does a mother look like? What does a father look like? What does fun look like? Picture it in the form of a gift, a present that Jesus is holding out in front of you. Go ahead and close your eyes for a moment and picture it. What does that characteristic look like? And maybe you're thinking, I see the gift, I see the present in Jesus' hands, but I don't know how to receive it. And he knows that. He's touching your heart first. He's preparing you for what's to come. It's not something you have to strive for. You will just be able to receive it. And so now just imagine his left hand coming in. And he's uprooting some of those fears, some of that pain, and he's removing them by his grace. He takes the fear and he throws it on the ground. And with his other hand, he takes the gift and put it, puts it in front of you. You pick up the gift and put it inside of your own heart. Close your eyes for a moment and picture this moment. Jesus is removing some of the pain, some of the weeds, some of the fears, some of the questions. He's placing them on the ground and with his other hand, he gives you that gift and you pick it up and you put it inside of your heart. See yourself receiving that gift into your heart and Jesus gives you a big hug. He smiles and he gives you a silly wink and he reminds you that he's here anytime you want to connect with him. As you go through this process, I believe you'll begin to see fruit from this encounter show up in your life. The grace of those character traits will pop up in the people around you. I also have a feeling that God will even send you some of your own strangers on the way. Thank you so much for taking this journey with me. Thank you for bringing your heart, your vulnerabilities, your pain. Holy Spirit, I just pray that you'd seal in everything from, from this encounter with you. Seal it in. Thank you, Jesus, that they can connect with you at, on this bench at any point, any time. They can ask their questions. They can bring their wounds. They can bring their pain. Holy Spirit, I pray that you just seal in everything that you did today and that, um, that that gift would just sink deep into their hearts and that they would see the fruit from it in the days and weeks to come. And I just declare over you that it is just the beginning and the best is yet to come. Amen.